I use the term going so far into the darkness that you come out into the light quite a bit. It's because to me it sums up what sinisterism is all about. Sinisterism is more than reading the grimoires and doing the rituals. It's, it's not about staying on a lateral plane. It's also going down, digging deeply, searching for the primal aspects of the left-hand path. Primal in history, primal in the psyche, thus obtaining truth. And how does one do this? Where do you go to find the primal darkness? And how does one transcend this primal darkness? You begin by finding that unbroken chain leading us back to the origins of the occult. Because from India to Ireland, there is a common pagan root. It's just not coincidence that Pashupati and Kurnanas are so similar, or Odin and Rudra for that matter. But unfortunately here in the West, the links of that chain have been broken by the destructive actions of the death cults of Abraham, namely Christianity and Islam. But in the East, they've retained those traditions. So as sinisterists, it is important to get to know the Eastern traditions. Now, there are differences between the East and the West when it comes to the, the occult left-hand path practices. I will admit it. But the similarities outweigh the differences. Because in both Eastern and Western practices, the goal is the same. That is, not becoming one with the gods, but becoming as the gods are. Self-deification. And in the East, the ultimate god of the left-hand path is Shiva. The left face of Brahman. Shiva the destroyer. And in the East, they reach self-deification through acceptance of the horrors of existence, like Nietzsche's Amor Fati, love of fate, going beyond good and evil and finding the strength to say yes to life. Saying yes to existence by going to the limits, by defying convention, questioning authority, and putting themselves outside society's norms. To become the monsters at the windows, the wolves circling the herds. This is a radical path to enlightenment or sinister illumination. No means to this awakening is too frightening for this is the path of the shadow of death. And to the Hindu Aghori, death is their spiritual teacher and Shiva, their god. Trying to understand the Aghori from a Western per perspective, though, is not easy. But incorporating aspects of their practice into yours may help you in reaching your goal. Now, I'm not saying one should partake in cannibalism, no. India, Indian society, is much more extreme than what we have here in the West, so their heterodox actions must be more extreme. But there is a method to their madness and a purpose. Their goal is to eliminate thoughts of duality between pure and impure, light and dark, going beyond good and evil. And by understanding and facing death, the inevitable ending, the Aghori finds life. They attempt to reach the peace not unlike that obtained by the dying who have come to terms with their mortality. 
an all-encompassing acceptance of existence by gaining strength from the horror, finding strength in the primal darkness. And in the primal darkness sits Shiva. Shiva is the darkness. And darkness is greater than light because it was there before the light, waiting. So in conclusion, my friends, foes, and faithful minions, choose the dark to obtain your goal of sinister illumination. You learn so much more from the darkness than light, because you'll go blind staring at the sun.